Hi everyone! Now, if you're a frequenter, or even if you're not a frequenter to the Thomas Universe, both on YouTube and also in person, you probably would have seen this brand new line of toys, which I've seen heaps of YouTubers already have really great looks at, and also have seen plenty on Instagram and stuff of people all around the world picking this new line up. But if you haven't heard of it, this here is the face of the Thomas Mini series, which is designed to celebrate 70 years of Thomas and Friends. Now, I know there's plenty of other reviews on um, the YouTube and on the web, but I think that there's a couple of things I wanted to add about this awesome collectible series, and a couple of interesting questions I want to ask you guys about where you live and where you found this series, and whether or not Hit's done the right approach in marketing what is actually a fantastic new toy line. So are you ready? Let's do it. So the first thing I wanted to have a look at in this review was how these are not so much packaged but displayed in store. Now in the three different Toys R Us's that I found these in, um, I found that the way these have been set out was really confusing and wasn't going to encourage people to buy them because the minis here as you can see are like blind bagged. Now from my experience the Lego minifigures which have the same kind of system have always been both at the counter. Um, but if they're not at the counter, then they're always in the Lego section, where the rest of the Lego sets are, there's a box of these ready to be opened. The problem I found with the Thomas Minis was that the way I discovered them was purely by accident, was when I saw this display case sitting with all the new Thomas merchandise, because I was looking for the two new Wooden Railway anniversary items, because I really want to pick those up as a fan of this series and the Wooden Railway um, stuff. And I just saw this case and I was like, Oh, this is weird. Like, what's this? I've never seen these before. They look like Taken Plays, but they're not. Sure enough, turning around, reading the packaging, I realised that this was some kind of collectible series. But nowhere with any of the Thomas stuff at any of the Toys R Us's that I visited could I find the actual engines that go with this series. And so, just out of pure luck, because I know that Toys R Us does like to put um, a lot of these kind of toys at the counter, I went to the counter. But Toys R Us has multiple counters, like most stores, and as, again, like most stores, they're never all open at once. And it turned out that the three boxes of these Thomas Minis that I found were not located at the register one, which is the one that's normally open. It's been open um, all the times I've been there. I've never seen registers like three, four, and five, I think it is, at the uh, Toys R Us near my house, which is still an hour away. But I've never seen any of those other registers open. So there were these, but I had to go hunting through all the registers to find where these guys were located. And so for me, I think it makes literally no sense to split these away from this. And instead, that they should have had these at the checkout, sure. But most importantly, at the Thomas section, because that's where people are going to find them. When they're looking for Thomas items, they're going to find these. And it's going to make a lot more sense for both parents and children to find these with the rest of the Thomas and Friends items in the range. The other thing I found with the, the way these are set out is that this kind of didn't really explain how it was supposed to work in terms of the case. For example, it says it contains 16 spaces for engines, but there's actually only 14 spaces in here, and you have to kind of like look at the box to realise that there's a space here and a space here for two more engines. And beyond that, unless you actually like read the instructions, I would never have realised that this little thing on the back is actually a play track for the Locos themselves. Um, likewise, with when you open up the lid, I'll just do that right now for you on camera. How cool is that? I would never have realized that this in here was not just fancy design, but it was actually legitimately meant to be a little play track. So I think that like the way they kind of advertise it and like draw attention to the features on this probably could have been done better to make it sell, because I really want this to sell, because we want to show Mattel and Entertainment that this is the kind of toy that you want to be making, not only in the current toy market, because not only collectors are a big thing, but people want cheap toys because, you know, apps are so cheap and it's so easy for people to say no, that toy's too expensive, especially in Australia, when wooden railway sets can cost hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, and that's not including the special ones that I know you see in the USA. And so, having a toy like this, where, you know, you're paying only a couple of dollars for these guys is awesome and it definitely means that I would hope that for the next wave of releases that they're going to get a little bit more display. But now let's get to the actual corners of the item. So the first thing I want to note is that I bought mine and this clip doesn't actually work. 
I don't know if anyone else has found that. Not that it particularly bothers me, but it does concern me when you buy something out of the box and like it doesn't clip together. So thankfully there's other clips that uh, sort that out. But um, as you can see, I have the current Wave 1 because I figured out the code before I went and bought millions of them. So I only have a couple of duplicates. I've got a duplicate of these guys, um, of Edwards and of Victor. But beyond that, I actually don't have any duplicates, which is nice. Because I know how painful it is to have a lot of duplicates. Cough, character building. Um, this display case, I think, in its presentation is actually really nice. I like the way they've actually put thought into detailing, you know, pistons and cylinders and, you know, Thomas's number one and valves and everything. I think they've done that really well. I personally think the compartments are probably a little bit too big. Both because um, I would be like it if you could fit more in here because 16 when the set is series is going to have over 75 engines i think it has about 78 or something um having only 16 fit in here is kind of problematic because i'm really tempted at the moment because they're on sale to buy like a big like stack of them so i've got somewhere to put all the engines um so i probably would have preferred them to make it a little bit smaller and probably try and cram some more into here and also because obviously if you've got more space the engines are more likely to rattle around more and that's when from a collector's point of view especially on this beautiful one like this gold thomas that's when you're going to get damage happening to the paintwork. And for some collectors, that's a really big deal. For me, that's kind of a deal. When I'm buying a new toy, I don't like to scratch it off. Different when you're buying secondhand toys, because that's a whole different other story. Um, but in terms of new toys, I feel like these are just asking for a little bit too much, like, bashing around. Whereas these ones here, you can see they're quite tight in the way they fit in, so they don't move around. Whereas these ones move around a lot more. However, in saying that, I think the display case is really good. And if you're going to pick these up, display case is worth it. Not only for the, the awesome little Golden Thomas, but for the actual fact that it's a display case as well. And of course, the play track is a bonus feature. Alrighty, guys, I've tried to capture the whole range in frame, but kind of didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Either way, you can see here, um, grouped into the different um, collections via the little pamphlet that it comes with, which I think is really awesome. Not only is it really cleverly folded, but it just is a really cool way to display all the characters. You can see that like these are all the characters we've got from the first wave. Now, I have seen on Instagram a couple of photos of people who have some ones from um, a different series because I know that they had the normal coloured Toby and they had the robotic Millie and I think a robotic someone else um, and they had Race Thomas. So that's definitely another series. But I think the fact that you've got so many different series is really, really cool. So first of all, the um, obviously the metallic ones. This gold Thomas is just amazing. Like, wow. I love that they went with that, that shininess. Um, although I can see people not liking the, the yellow rather than the shiny metallic gold on the um, boiler. I think it matches the wheels and actually matches the uh, 70th anniversary wooden Thomas, which is the same, which has a yellow plastic for the boiler rather than a shiny plastic. So maybe that was intentional, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But I just love the way the gold goes all the way around and just looks... Really, really clean and crisp and nice. If it had, like, gold buffers or something, which I'm going to get to in a minute, it would have just looked super-duper awesome. James, again, I really like. I really like that they've painted a lot of detail on here, which they, they could have very easily not painted on. Um, and I think, again, he looks really good with the metallic. I think it would be cool if they did the, uh, the wheels in metallic, but we'll have to wait and see because, obviously, James has black wheels. So for engines like Percy and Gordon, who have bl blue and green wheels... Um, we'll see if they're metallic or not in the next series. I'm glad they put Thomas in the in the first wave. I think that's really important. I think had they tried to hold the basic Thomas off, it would have annoyed a lot of people. It certainly would have annoyed me because I feel like, despite the fact that I'm, um, you know, I'm in agreement with a lot of the fandom that you know we don't always want to see Thomas in all our episodes. Um, I think it's important that he's in there for the kids, and so I'm glad they put Thomas in. And in saying that, I think he looks really good. I think the proportions of these guys are, are bizarre, but they are kind of good bizarre, if that makes any sense. Like they kind of remind me a bit of uh, Trackmaster, in that they're quite tall, but fat, like short at the same time, if that makes any sense. You can see that, so for example, like you know, they all have really short funnels, they're really, really squashed, but they have really big faces. You can see that Thomas's um, water tanks are really tall, and they should really only come up to about there. They come up quite high. Um, but I think that actually works for the aesthetic of the range. Um, don't have anything particular to say about the classic ones, only that I think they all did a really good job of both the faces and of the paintwork. Something I would like to point out, though, um, which is kind of hard to show on camera, I have to say, 
is that the way the faces are done is that you can kind of see on camera how it looks like it's like kind of not smooth, it's a bit cross-hatched, as opposed to the paint, which when you look at it again, has that kind of cross-hatched kind of look, and I think it's because it's somehow printed on, like by a machine in a factory, and so, although I can't really show it on camera, unfortunately, because the lighting, um, you can see that it's got that look, but it also means that the faces aren't quite white, they're not, they're not white, they're more like a kind of a grey, and, um, the grey is kind of dappled. It's not like a solid colour. It's like um, there's little bits of white in there and black in there and grey all kind of dotted together. So on a really close inspection, which the camera is not going to let me do, it's going to hate me forever. I can kind of see it there. You can see it kind of looks like he's been dotted at low resolution. And that's because that's the one thing. The faces are printed a bit strangely because they're printed, not painted. However, it doesn't really worry you. From a distance, you can't tell. And engines like Scruff who have a plastic separately plastic moulded face don't have that problem. So Scruffs is actually a standard like one colour because it's just that plastic and they paint over the top of it. Whereas these guys are probably just have the face and it gets the whole colour gets painted on rather than being the plastic colour. Um I think they all look really good. I think ones like Steven work incredibly well, which I would have not expected to, but I think in that proportion they look really good. Scruff's a good one. As you can see, this guy, Ben and Dart, I don't even know. Oh, Dash, there you go, how embarrassing. So unimportant, I don't remember their names. What's weird about this one is I actually forgot who was who. Um, this is Bert, though I have learned that now. But there's no Ari, there's just Bert. Nowhere in the classics can I find his brother. There's just this guy, which to me makes literally no sense because it's exactly the same paint except the face. So it would have been so much easier for them to make, like, him instead of like, like, why did they make Norman? No, is that Norman? No, that's Sydney. See, I don't even know. Paxton, I know. But like, you've got these characters who featured in like, Day of the Diesels, and then one other episode, and they've made it into the classics range. And like, they didn't put an actual classic in. I don't know. The way they put these classics to me was kind of a bit weird. I got most of them. Um, I feel like, like, putting these two in was a poor choice. Much would have rather, like, Duck and Oliver or something like that. Um, although the rest of them are pretty, like, close. I think they're, I think they're trying to blend some old characters, you know, like, as you can see, like, there we've got Skarloey, but also some new characters like Porter, which I kind of understand because it is meant to be an updated version. It just seems that because those characters are so bad, like, why would we ever put them in there? I mean, what? Sorry, I didn't say that aloud. Um, but yeah, I think that's understandable, the way they did most of those. Um, and I also like that they gave a lot of other engines a go on the back here. They're not all just Thomas repaints. There's actually only, like, two Thomas repaints as far as I can ascertain. There's the, the race Thomas and the, the superhero Thomas, but the rest are quite different. So that that's good. I do like that. Mild distraction right there. Um, coming over to these guys, in the spooky ones you get three. So you get the mummy Percy, the pirate Salty, which makes so much sense. I'm so glad someone finally did that. Um, and then the... Ghost Emily, I believe that's what it is. Uh, Neon Toby is actually really cool. I thought I was going to hate it. I saw the Neon ones, I thought I was going to hate them, but I think he's just so funky and outlandish. This is what Toby would have been like when he was young. I think Party Toby, like, he got a bit old and went grey. Um, this is Party Toby for sure. I actually really like it. I'm so keen to have all of those ones together. I have to say, I think my least favourite of the superhero ones, uh, I've only got one, but I think that although it's cool, they're just a little bit too weird for me, don't make a lot of sense. Um, whoop, dropping them everywhere. Um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of the way they end up looking. But in saying that, like, they're not bad, and I'm glad they're doing something different. The race ones are quite cool. I think the way they've done the patterns are really nice. You can recognise that the, see that white isn't quite white. You can see it's got lines in it. On these ones with lots of paint, you can start to tell that it's been printed, not painted. But again, I don't really see that as a problem. Um, the chillin' ones, like this guy, is awesome. Love that, love that colour. And the monochrome, I think, also, too, works so, so well. Um, just It's just incredible how well they, they actually go together and how cool they look. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my quick look at them. I think they're actually really cool. I think they've done a good job. I think that it's disappointing that Diesel 10 misses out on his cab windows. But in saying that, they didn't paint cab windows on any of them. It's just that because Diesel 10 has a front like that, you really notice it. So I can see where they're coming from. All right, guys. So as you can see... These minis are beautiful and awesome and amazing. 
And so the last things I want to say about it is that I think it's really important... Uh, two things, really. I think it's really important that we go out and support this as a fandom because I think that the consensus is that these are really good. So if you're a fan of these, go out to your store, buy them, take a look at them, show that you're interested. Let not only Mattel know, but also the retailers know that these kind of toys are the ties that we really like. Now I can say that for the price that these are, which is uh, $3 in Australia, is how much I paid for each of these, and I think this is by far the best checkout toy that I've ever had the chance to look at, and certainly the best $3 toy I've ever had a chance to look at. Currently, um, there's lots of Thomas and train sales going on, so you can get them for, I can see, I've seen two for five, so you save 50 cents on each one, and I've seen a display case, which I did pay $30 for, has gone down to 15 or even like 20 Um... So you can see there's some really good prices going on. They're not an expensive toy, but I think they're great collectibles and fun toys because they're a good size, but they're also really solid. And so let's go out and support them. And second of all, I just hope that the second wave of the toys, because as you can see, and as Leo found out the hard way, um, these toys, there's obviously 75 of them, and yet in the first wave, we only get like 18 or something, which really isn't very many. Like you think half would make more sense but we really don't even get close to touching that. And so I hope that in the second wave, we get a new packaging or some indication that these are the new series because the printing on the front does nothing to indicate that this is a new series. That doesn't, that's not in the series. That's not, and that's not, and that's not. So they think they need to make sure, and they being Mattel, that they give us some way of knowing that the new series is out because I know a lot of apprehensive parents wouldn't want to keep buying a blind bag toy if they didn't know the secret, if they're just a casual consumer. They're going to buy a couple of these and think that they probably got them all. Um, and so changing the colour, I can see them doing like a green or a red or something to represent another Thomas and Friends colour um, to indicate the second series. And I hope then that in the same vein that the retailers stock the second series because I know that one of the trouble holes with Transformers toys is that often they get huge amounts of the first series, which I know is what's happened with these. I went to the second one, Toys R Us. They had four boxes of these all open at once. Um, I'm going to go back there this week and see how they're selling with all the sales. But I can see the problem of these being ordered in huge bulk, and especially if they don't give them a new packaging. It's going to be really hard for retailers to possibly justify buying more of them if they don't know that the second case has arrived. And you end up with a Transformers situation where um, they buy the first wave of the series, which happened last year in Australia particularly. Lots of first wave Transformers Age of Extinction stuff, and it just sat there. And because it sat there, the second and third and fourth waves didn't get a release until months and months and months after they did in other places around the world. And by then, people like me had given up waiting and bought them online, therefore meaning they sit there for even longer. So that needs to the change to make sure that, you know, retailers and consumers will know that the second series is out and we can go buying. And the last little thing I want to add on to that is hopefully, if this is a success, I'd love to see them do rolling stock in this scale. I think having Annie and Clarabelle and Troublesome Trucks, all that kind of stuff would be awesome. Um, I reckon you could probably almost make like a whole collectible series, like minis, like wagons or something. And I, if this was successful, I can really easily see a track system coming up and this can be the replace almost like the the spiritual replacement kind of for the bluebird Ertl minis you know that kind of miniature thomas collectible um and i can see that being a thing i mean there's heaps of characters they can still make i can see that's because of the small size i can see them just doing a scaled down version of the take and play track and i think all that kind of stuff would make a lot of people really really happy so let me know what your thoughts are on the minis um, I'm glad, please let me know if you've had any problems with your cases, um, what price you've seen them for, if you know about any other waves, because I know that they're out there, but if you're, if you've seen the other waves, if you've got some of the ones that aren't included in this first wave in Australia, um, where you bought them from, what country you're in, I'd be really keen to know, um, how you're sourcing them, and then whether or not you've had any success collecting them, any strange anomalies and numbers, anything at all. Maybe you hate them, maybe you think these are the stupidest things Mattel ever made. Tell us why. I'm really excited to know because I really want to get a vibe about whether everyone else is excited about this as I am. Alrighty, guys. I've rambled on for way too long. So, thanks very much for watching. Do all the cool things which I just said, and I always have to repeat this at the end of every video, but that's okay. And this is what I say now, remember, with the new channel. That's all we've got time for from Extreme Trains.